All right, there's a brand new show that's been launched on TG Car. First episode went live last night. It's called Era Nua. It's uh, presented by an OTB AM regular, Hector O'Huckagon. He's going to join us in just a couple of moments' time. Uh, we'll give him the big sell again, and he'll be on the line to chat to us a little bit about that. I uh, did watch it last night, I have to say, and um, really enjoyed it on. But, I mean, you know, I'm into the Irish language in a way that you're just not. Oh, I, I, I um, watched a bit of it as well. You, uh, I didn't see it all. I just flicked, I fast-forwarded it a bit with, uh, with Kerry in it. <laughs> well, listen. Yeah, just I did that classic thing of, well, do you, does my mother know that person? This sort of thing, which you do quite often when something's on uh, on TV. I'm looking forward to watching the full series because it looks absolutely brilliant. What did you take from it? Um, I took from it that there isn't enough celebration of the diverse nature of Irish culture. Like, I think, particularly from a media point of view, there's a big responsibility to do more than just report on the bad stuff, which is, I think, what tends to happen, and uh, not enough celebration of whether it's the varying nationalities that have come and settled in this country, or the people that have been here, uh, like travellers, for example, for um, hundreds of thousands of years. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of what I take from it on, that I think it's a brilliant celebration. I think there should be more of this type of thing. It's a very positive um, story um, about where Ireland is at in 2021. So we've given it the big sell and now the presenter of the show is actually on the line. So Hector, you can save us from filling time here. Good morning to you. I, th- I think, did I hit the wrong button? <laughs> I think we're all hitting wrong buttons this morning. You're live, Hector. Good morning to you. Sorry, apologies, boys. Uh, it's, uh, I hit the wrong button. Morning, Owen. Morning, Adrian. How are you keeping? Yeah, we're not too bad. Yeah, good. I just had the wheat a bit, so we're sorted for Friday. Good, man. The first thought I had when I watched uh, Half Nine TG Car last night and every Thursday for the next few weeks was, it's happy days for you because in any other year, the, you would have had a big conflict at uh, around about nine, half nine on a Thursday night, but United going so well has suddenly freed up your Thursdays. <laughs> uh, United going so well. It, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. It was, a, it was an amazing end to the game the other night, but we can't be doing that too often this season. Um, but yeah, Thursday nights, Thursday nights for the first time in years, we've been coming, doing, we're doing a show now around Ireland. And uh, as you, you were talking about, boys, last night was the first night of it. So I'm delighted with the reaction. And it was nice to get out during lockdown. We filmed for the whole of March, uh, you know, all the way through Cheltenham when, when people or some people were over in Cheltenham of March this year. Uh, I did about 28 days on the road. And we, we traveled to every county in the country. And there was a lot of sporting stories in the middle of all that as well. So. Hopefully it'll go down well. It shows where we are now with five, over 5 million people in the country for the first time since way back in the 18th century sometime. Yeah, After 20 years, it was interesting watching the, your first link last night I, and I did wonder after 20 years, are you still a bit apprehensive about how it gets received? Are you just like, listen, I got the magic formula here, this is going to be all good? No, you never know. We're only as good as our last show and we're all freelancers making this programme and we just like making TV shows that hopefully people will sit down and have a cup of tea and enjoy something different and keep it fresh. We don't come back three or four times a year with a show agent. We just try and do a show a year. It takes a lot of, there's about 10 people working on it. They're all freelancers and I'm working with the same team of people. I mean, the DOP, Russell Callan is the guy who shoots Hell Week. He's shot all the SAS Who Dares wins. He's won BAFTAs for Grand Designs. Uh, he's won five ifters or four ifters on this on this travel show that we do for TG Car. But we have a great team and Evan Chamberlain. He's the guy I travel the world with as a producer. So it's a nice team of people when we try and make these shows. I know we have an RT audience. I know we have an audience that like what we do. So you know, uh, and it's nice that it lives in the parish of TG Car. What What was the biggest thing that you learned, Hector, from your travels? Uh, going abroad? Or no, the the, uh, for this season. Oh, it's just, I, I knew that they were there, and I knew that these people are walking the streets of the villages and towns of the countries, and not only in the cities. I knew that there was an amazing diversity, and it started, I suppose, uh, let's go back to the Celtic Tiger. I know there was there were, there, were other, there were people coming to the country in a steady flow, but we never just noticed it. I suppose the Celtic Tiger opened our eyes to Polish, to the influx of Polish people who are prepared to get down and mix the cement and fill the sand and, and shovel in the wheelbarrows and do all the heavy work and then start plastering and then work in the supermarkets or fill petrol or, or do all those jobs, you know, our carpentry, our first fixing and roofing. And we saw an amazing amount of Polish coming into the country. I still think there's well over 100,000 Polish still here. But um, so I knew they were there. I know they're in my local parish and I know that the parish has changed and I know the dynamic, if I'm coaching young lads under 17 and all the way through over the last few years, I could see in a few of the city teams that there was a few uh, different cultures coming in different colored skins coming in different different lands were starting to play gaelic football and so uh, you know you'd see it it's you know we could feel it we could see it but do we really know 
who these people are. I mean, are we taking our, our, our eyes out of our phone or in our busy, busy world as we walk along the streets or drive along a rural town? Uh, are we looking to, this, to, the, to the paths to see who are the people? Have I engaged with them? Have I spoken to them? Do I know their background? Do I know what countries they come from? Do I know their language? Do I know their story? Because all these people have amazing stories, all completely different of how they've got here and what they're looking for. And yes, they want a better life. But and so until you engage in that conversation. So for me, it was the it was the richness of these stories was the best part of it. It, it, like it feels that the show comes at a really interesting time there was one of your contributors towards the end the lady in Donny Carney I think she was was talking about how she'd lived her I don't know was it 30 or 40 years and it was only in the last 4 or 5 years she's felt that there's a racism that's be, that's come into Irish society like it does come at an interesting time Hector where and you just have to look at some of the pages this morning reports that uh, some lout in the UK has been uh, given a prison sentence for uh, abusing a uh, footballer online. Like, it comes at an interesting time where I think people who feel it's OK to have those racist views now suddenly feel it's OK to publicly uh, give voice to that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, we're at a bit of a junction, aren't we? I, I suppose, I don't know, we saw what happened, like, I don't know, across the water is a country that's broken in so many ways. I mean, booing national anthems and and stuff like that coming from the stadiums and, and during the Euros from the, the English supporters. I suppose it's a lack of education. I think there's a, there's a, there's a lack of understanding. I re, I'm really positive about the future that that, that I have a 17 year old, 15 year old boys in school. And mm. It's a big school and that the, these guys and, and the, the new wave of, of young men and women coming through and the new generation don't, hopefully the education and the openness to cultures and the openness to sitting beside your friend, new friends at school. And it's a, it, we're moving so fast in this country. I mean, that lady from Donna County, Patricia, you know, when she arrived in and she went to that pub in Ballyferreter in 1977, as she said, she felt like an African queen walking into the pub and everybody stopped. And the whole, the, the, the taps of the Guinness taps hissing. And it was only when they broke down the conversation by where are you working and are oh, you going to be a nurse in Dublin? And, and, and then the conversation started and they left. They, they had a great time in Valley Bird on her first day ever in Ireland. But to think that she's dedicated 35 years of her life working in, it was a lovely photo of her working in the, with, with, in the nurses in the hospital in Dublin. An amazing woman, but an interesting comment that she's only felt stuff like that in the last five yeah. years. Why has is, why is that happened? Is it technology? Is it the access of so-called proper information that we're getting on our mobiles? Is it because it's the done thing? Is it because these you, lads want to, want to see the cool in, in a group mob environment or if they're out on a couple of lads standing on the corner of the street? I don't know. You know, there's so many avenues and answers and questions of why, it, why that has happened and why it didn't happen. Um, yeah, and, and but on, like the technology one is an interesting one, and I don't really, I, I've never really subscribed to the idea that it's the technology itself that's to blame, other than the people that's behind it. But they're like in our the English comparison is obviously one that's very close at hand, and it's pretty grotesque at the minute in a lot of ways, in a way that that we're not quite at, and hopefully we'll never get. But there is like an, a, um, in my experience, um, I've been out and about like a quiet. Um, People, people feel comfortable, I feel at times, as a white Irish person, expressing their racism to me as in a way that I that they feel that I'm going to sort of suddenly support this uh, this idea that they have. It feels like, and I don't know if, if that's other people's experience or not, but that there is that, and it's not a, by any stretch of the imagination like a, a, a huge issue, but I definitely at times feel as if people are comfortable in their groups to express those views in a way that I, I wouldn't have seen before, I have to say. Yeah, I could agree with you. That I don't know whether it's again it's the group environment or sitting having a it's a casual comment, and um, I know, but it is it is a very important topic, and we're at a very important stage of it. And throughout this series, I will you know we've met thirty five different nationalities of people, but when you go down into the different shows, I mean, boy, do we spoke to boy who say yeah, we went down to uh, Westmead and I sat with boy in Rosemount in, uh, outside Moulton. This lad has come over as from Liberia as a nine-year-old and, and, and worked his way through school and picked up a size five football and, and then uh, played for his club and then played senior and then has played for his county. And it was an absolutely lovely afternoon sitting with him in a beautiful sunny day in, in County Westmead. And now look at him representing his, his county. And his story is brilliant. And But, you know, it's it's 
it's a, it's an interesting time. I think it's changing. Everything's changing quickly in this country. And, and I suppose the message I want to get out is that we need to lift our eyes and, and, and make conversations. We need conversations to keep ourselves going. We need to make a little bit more effort to say hello and, and start a normal conversation and not to start the conversation like, where are you from? Obviously, if, you know, and, and that's something I found on the series that if the person doesn't look like us, doesn't have the same color skin, uh, that doesn't mean they're not Irish. Mm. And that's a big statement to make in this country in 2021. And that really annoys people when people go, where are you from? And then they turn out, I'm Irish, but you don't look Irish. But that doesn't mean I'm not Irish because there's over half a million people born in this country who don't look Irish, who are Irish. Yeah. And like the other thing we need to get our head around is that, and by the way, I do think that people will leave the show, like we were chatting away in the office earlier on about the uh, Russian guy uh, down in Kerry. I think everybody <laughs> leave the show with their own, their little favourites. I can't recommend watching it enough. Um, like we do have to accept as a society as well in any society that like when you have an influx of people it's right that obviously a number will come in and they will be huge contributors to society there'll be employers there'll be elite sports people and there'll be all that kind of thing but like you don't just draft in a section of you know elite people there's always going to be people who have issues uh, health issues mental health issues there's the full range and as a society i think that's a I think that's going to be an important one for us to get our head around because we tend to shine the spotlight on those let's let's call them negative stories um and that tends to be become the conversation then that tends to be the thing that allows people to give voice to their slightly racist views or whatever it might be so i think that that's something we need yeah, to get our head around and, ma and maybe it, maybe adrian people think that they're taking something from us like i mean if you look at that the, the seven or eight guests we had there last night yeah. that latvian family in mullingar yeah. they, they've now got their own he's, he's now he started working in a mushroom factory he came picking mushrooms, his wife followed, their kids speak Irish, the daughter works in financial services, they've all been schooled and educated here. They speak the local language and they speak Irish and they speak English and they speak Latvian. He has now got his own construction company. The Lord Mayor of Wisconsin, who's a very wealthy man, gave up everything to live on sheep's head. Jean, uh, Patricia from, from, from Ghana gave 35 years of her life to the hospital and working with people with, with, with head injuries in Dublin. All these people have contributed. They, they all have their own stories and they all have contributed to the economy of this country and they've all brought something to the economy of the country i mean you know there's there's there are a couple of my guests that have escaped war-torn places like syria and some people have to escape from palestine there's some great stories coming up but not everybody who comes to this island is coming here with, with nothing and, and they have nothing to offer there's so much to mm. offer and so many people who just want to get here for a variety of different reasons economically and getting a job is a very fundamental and that's a very thing but an awful lot of the people that came here that young lad from France, all he wanted to do, Pierre, was get to the best pike fishing lake that in Europe. That was incredible. Now, <laughs> now, who, now, did, did, now, who owned? Did you know we have the best pike fishing lake in I Europe? I did not. Did not. Like, that, like it, it, we don't know these things. We drive by Loch Derg and go, it's great, we'll be we stopped for a pint. Meanwhile, he's spending 220 days on Loch Derg fishing for the greatest pike in the world. And it was pouring rain. And he said, from France, he's a Frenchman, and we all think the grass is greener. Oh, well, you've left a lovely climate and a lovely food and lovely people in France. No. I'm in heaven here, he said. I'm in paradise. This, to me, is the greatest pike fishing lake in Europe. And, and this is the really interesting thing, Hector, I suspect, as we watch this season, is about how much we learn about our own country and how much having a hugely multicultural society will benefit our country. And I know it's not about rural Ireland, this show, but but certainly just from that one episode, that the, the one thing... I certainly took from it was that interview with uh, Victor Beda, as uh, Adrian mentioned there, the, the, the guy from Russia who learned Irish uh, in, in Russia and, and came over and is now uh, a local language officer in South Kerry. And you interviewed him on, on the beach in Balanskelegs, which, uh, which is where my mother is from. We spent a lot of time down there. And when, whenever I was a child down there, I always used to think to myself, God, who even goes to school here? There's like two kids in every class and it's getting lower and lower and lower and people are just leaving the area in their droves. And then I think a few years ago, Hector, they went multi-denominational and I think they were the first school in the Gweltucht to do so, to get out of the clutch of the Catholic Church. You've got a guy from Russia coming into the area who to promote the yeah. Irish language and all of a sudden the place is kind of breathing again. And I wonder if you yeah. throw COVID into the mix, are we going to start to see a little bit of a reversal of that childhood idea of being like, geez, who would want to live down here? This this is in the back arse of nowhere. Yeah, it's a nice point. What a magnificent beach. I was never, ever down in that neck of the Gweltuck down there. And it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, beautiful scenery. And to see that, you know, he was down there amongst the people 
Victor by that his Irish is magnificent, but yeah. as you say, that maybe maybe those little communities are going to get a reboot. Maybe with the hybrid working, of people can work from their laptop if they have their Wi-Fi now. And I just think it's a great. It could be a great time for rural Ireland. I've heard stories of really good restaurateurs and young chefs in Dublin with young families who've decided to go back to their home parishes in Donegal and places, and they're going to open their own restaurants. That can only be a good thing if people can get out of the city. And we all know over the last two to three days and the last week alone what Dublin is. Dublin is collapsing under the monetary, under this under this broken rental house sale system. Nobody can buy a house in this country. It's an absolute disgrace. No young couple can buy a house or young people who want to get on the first rung of the ladder. So it's, it, we are, I said, across the water is broken, but there's, there's, there's serious issues here. But if people can move down the country and go to these parishes and assimilate and, and find work and be happy, in the fresh air of a rural place it's, it's brilliant but victor was fantastic and it just shows you that anyone can learn a language it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in it doesn't matter what language it is it takes practice practice makes perfect i mean i went to bilbao with nothing all i could say was arriba arriba undele undele after four or five years in bilbao i i, I immersed myself with living with, with with locals in an apartment where no english was spoken and i'm so proud that i can speak spanish fluently now and languages open up the world and all of the guests that I have. Wasn't it beautiful last night to see that family from Mullingar, 20-something years, and, and they've bought a lovely house outside Mullingar, that the youngsters were able, that their young daughters were able to mix between English and Latvian and Irish. And that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I was looking at it. There was great Westmead stuff, so you take the box from me, Hector. <laughs> this lad is obviously on about Kerry. I think everybody around the country is going to be like, oh, deadly, he's arrived in our place and shining a really positive light on things. Yeah, yeah, and we've cricket stories in there, we've Finn Harp stories in there, we've GA stories in there, we've got we've got a, a windsurfer from Sardinia who decided to fall in love, he fell in love with Bally Bunyan, he was working in Dublin, he was always into windsurfing, Lorenzo Cubedo, and he went. To, he's living in Bally Bunyan, he's working in Super Value, he uh, got washed away on his board about two years ago on a bad winter's day on the, on the, on the swell in Bally Bunyan, and you know, he spent 17 hours out at sea, everyone thought he was lost, he got washed up. 11 miles away on the coast of County Clare. It's an amazing story because he really thought he was gone, clinging onto a, a board for 17 hours in the Atlantic at the end of November. And to talk, the way he talked as we watched the waves crashing in on the beach in Ballybunion, I said, but Sardinia, Sardinia is beautiful, tranquil Mediterranean waters. It's hot summers. It's beautiful food. And he goes, no, no, that might be your, your I know I have that. But this, to me, is the real sea. I've never been happier than watching these waves crashing in on the west coast of Ireland, the Bally Bunyan. So, you know, I think it's going to give us a real juxtapose of our attitudes towards our country. Sometimes we take it for granted. Yes, we give out about the rain, but we really need to realise this is a great part of the world to live in. We're lucky by, by the grace of God to live on this island. And we, we have to make do what we have to do and just get on with it. Great. Well, look, we're looking forward to the rest of it. I have to say, the the anybody who tops the Russian, they, it was the. Do you know what it was? It was the bit of Russian that kept. Like, I think if you'd no context of the show, right, you would listen to it, and maybe you wouldn't. You'd never bat an eyelid. But knowing it, there was this little bit of Russian that kept sort of accent that kept uh, kept coming in on his yeah. on his Irish. It was yeah. beautiful, beautiful. No, but he was a real scholar. You have to take your hat off yeah. this guy. Mm. Like he studied in Trinity. He picked a minority language. The way he spoke about. Everybody can learn Spanish or French. Everyone does that. Everyone learns German. And he's right. Yeah. But then he said, I, I, he was interested in the minority languages. And then he said, where can I go to speak a minority language that I like? And obviously in, in Moscow, that's the thing we forget. Jack McFinn from the Grey Logan Lucan, he did a, an honours degree in mathematics and Irish in Notre Dame. So all over the world in these brilliant, brilliant huge universities of high standing there are irish academies all over the world where people from the country that they're in are learning irish as the language so he was attracted to a minority language but now he's attracted to living in a magnificent part of the world speaking irish naturally speaking irish with the locals speaking irish in the shop and he walks out his door and he's in south kerry i mean that's a match made in heaven for him language sense of place geographical location, a sense of community, and in the middle of it all, he has his language, the language of the people, and the language of the people that was speak, spoken for thousands of years. Yeah, that's beautiful. You kicked it off in Navin. Are you going back to Navin before the series is out, or what's the plan? Yeah, we'll be doing that. We're, <laughs> there's, there's loads of stories. We've got some great stories coming up, and uh, it's uh, they're really, they're, there's some really great stories, love stories and sad stories and happy stories. And a girl from Argentina, uh, Fernanda Gonzalez, who as a child used to write a diary in, uh, in Buenos Aires and she was born on the 27th floor of an apartment block and she listened to the Cranberries and loved you too 
and she always wanted to come to Ireland because of the castles. As a young child, she'd write her diary thinking she was a princess on an Irish in an Irish fairy tale. And she's 20 something years here now. She's fallen in love. She lives in Cork. And she said the music of you two as a teenager growing up in Argentina and the Cranberries, she used to cry listening to the Cranberries. She couldn't wait to get to Ireland. She she could recite every single lyric of a U2 song. Fact. I mean, we sat there talking talking about Unforgettable Fire and War, the albums. We started singing Sunday Bloody Sunday. And to hear this girl, she knew every single lyric, like we all did back <laughs> in the day. But she's so happy to be living in Ireland. And she took out her diary that she wrote as a 14-year-old and, and all about dreaming of going to Ireland and living in this amazing country. And her dream came true. I was asking that pointedly because I think you were with my mother-in-law at some point or another, so I'm looking forward to see if she appears at some point or another. And, um, say that again, Adrian. You were with my mother. You've interviewed my mother-in-law at some point or another. I'm not sure if she's actually going to appear on the show or not. In this year. Yeah, what, yeah. Where, where, what was that about? In China this Garden. Year. China Garden. Oh, for Christ's sake, <laughs> Michelle. Yeah, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelle. <laughs> I had heard a rumor, and I never put two and two together. <laughs> And so, I think I know most things in Navin, but uh, Michelle, there is you one go. Of the, uh, there you go. Michelle is one of the stalwarts of business in Navin. I mean, for a restaurant to be going for over 40 years in Navin, uh, we were only in it a couple of weeks ago. It is absolutely magnificent. My young boys are 17 and 15 now, and as kids, we were going up going, Dad, Dad, in the back <laughs> of the car as we travel through, and we travel through Longwood or, or on the way to Killy Dad, Dad. Dad, yeah, are we going? Are we going to the China Garden? I said, yes, we are, boys. Yes, we are. I'm but the same. The I'm the same. Chinese ever in Navin, man. It's a, it's an institution. And as you go in, as you go to the China Garden, all you hear is that great Navin welcome. Well, Hector. <laughs> well, oh, they're brilliant. About ten years later, I'm still the same driving up the road, Hector. There's no, uh, there's no getting away from uh, it. I, I, you know what a sun supper is then? A sun supper in the China Garden after a few points is legendary stuff. Not, and, uh, not to be beaten. Continue. Not to be beaten. Hector, best of luck with it. It's uh, if the stars out to go by, it's going to be an absolute cracker for the rest of it. Best of luck. Thanks, William, for joining us. Uh, lovely to talk to you boys this morning. Got a meal, Maggie. That's more.